Max Payne 2 Video Game Review. Following the events of the first game, everyone gets facial surgery to look completely differently than they did before, and Max leaves the DEA and becomes a cop again. He finds himself involved in a big case again with plenty of twists, and Mona reappears. This one has a bit more of a noir feel to the story overall, I would say, and the locations are also more consistently noir. The we again get the marriage of film noir story and atmosphere and John Woo style action. And this one has more of the kind of, not invincibility of the hero, but in that general direction, you know. It takes a lot to take out the lead. This does, of course, make the game easier probably because a lot of people found the first one to be too hard which more than anything shows that we're getting kind of lazy with you know challenging games nowadays in addition to the dodge you know the jumping to the side the dive move you can now also reload instantly, or nearly instantly, when running around in bullet time. Bullet time drains much slower and regains much quicker. You know, again, you have to kill others, but, you know, in order to regain more, in order to fill that meter back up. But it's much, much easier than it was in the first game. There are a couple of more weapons that you get to dual wield. And other than that, it's about the same. The basic weapon selection is about the same. Also, something that many of us are quite grateful for, now you don't have to switch weapons in order to throw a grenade or a Molotov cocktail. There's an excuse me, alternate fire, which will either deliver a, you know, gun butt smack if you haven't selected anything, or it will throw, yeah, one of the two aforementioned. Very useful. Much easier to actually use those two now. Now, the storytelling is about the same, again, with these comic comic book style panels with sound, voice, and music over them. The overall storytelling is better. The, the first one was kind of straightforward. This one goes for, you know, it has several chronological jumps. Only at the very end do you completely know what, you know, went on. You have to really pay attention and piece together and you know, reassemble the chronological order of events in your mind yourself. And that kind of is, you know, something you'd see in noir stories. You know, this kind of, you have to really pay attention to follow the plot and to piece it all together. It also helps keep things fresh and along with it is a much less rigid story structure. There are, again, a couple of chapters, and this time, you know, it goes back and forth between the different, you know, the levels show up in different order, and we have, you know, it, it actually surprises us. It is suddenly something will happen that you really didn't see coming, and there are story developments that you also really didn't see coming. The gameplay is much more fun and much less repetitive. It's again a very short game. We're talking 
10 hours at the most. And other than that, well, I'll get into that. What keeps the gameplay fresh is that not only are these, you know, specific type of levels in, you know, different order in the chapters, but there are also some, you know, little, you know, singular levels where something else takes place. For example, there are the ever popular protect and NPC levels. They're actually pretty good. They're usually intense and fun. Now, when you have completed the game, other than there are a couple of difficulty settings and the hardest one unlocks a different ending, other than that, there is something called, and, you know, of course, modding, which also happened with the first game. But other than that, there are these... It's, it's this sort of multiplayer deathmatch kind of thing, only everyone else is AI-controlled, and they just keep spawning, and basically you just have to keep Max alive for, you know, it's basically everyone is out to get you, and you have to stay alive for as long as you can, and it records your best time, and, you know, yeah, that's essentially it. But there are a couple of levels, levels for this, and, you know, as with the mods, go online, you'll find more levels for that. So that keeps the game, you know, that keeps you playing the game for a bit longer. And it is just a lot of fun to engage in shootouts in this game, which is why it's it's a pretty good idea with this other mode where you just there's nothing but shootouts, you know, there's no story to that mode. S several of the characters from the first one reappear, those that didn't die, and I would say that if you really love the first one, you're not going to be that happy with at least some of the characters, how they are when they reappear. I was personally quite unhappy with at least one of them. I should really say, Vinnie Gogniti returns, and I don't know, I suppose it's individual taste. Some will find him hilarious. He is even more pathetic than he was the first time. I didn't know it was entirely possible to make him that much more pathetic and not completely lose the tone at least. It gets kind of silly this time. In fact, that's really... it, it gets pretty silly. It still really holds to the noir tone, but where the first one was like dry and humorlessly noir. I, I don't know, maybe they thought that maybe some people really didn't like that. Maybe it was too much for some people. This one, it's sillier. You know, it's Captain Baseball Bat Boy and Lords and Ladies reappear. I suppose Lords, well, Lords and Ladies was really silly in the first one as well. In this one, it might be sillier. At least that one does have the excuse that it is kind of... I don't want to give too much away, but you may want to notice... You may want to stick around and hear what is... The, notice what's going on in Lords and Ladies, and compare it to something else. Captain Baseball Bad Boy. In the first one, it was this really drab comment on commentary on kind of cartoon violence and you know kind of kind of South Park style. You know this kind of very brutal violence and adult themes with children. In this one, it's he's a superhero now. It's, it's a kid's show where he's a superhero, and it's like, it's, it's wacky, and it's, it's like Power Rangers style, kind of. It's, yeah. I don't know. I prefer the old one, I gotta say. And then there is 
the I think new show with yeah that that one's pretty interesting I won't give too much away but yeah now the graphics are improved they look much nicer much more natural than in the first we again have a lot of grit and realism to the feel and you know you're going through back alleys it's New York it's dark you know there's not really any you know it, it's like it'll never be light again just like in the first game we again have some very tragic you know again as with most noir very tragic story developments and these kind of you know what's hiding under the surface kind of both characters and you know again story you know what's been going on and what is going on quite dark the I suppose that's more or less what there is to say. So yeah, basically if you do like the first one a lot, I would say play it, just try not to be too much of a purist about the first one because yeah, they do really kind of go in. They, they change some things. Although not as much as it seems like they have with the third one, but yeah, maybe I'll get to that. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.